page 3 of the Winter 2012 Exam 1. Looking at math ability. Alicia scored 670 points on the math part of the SAT. Those particular scores look like they followed a normal model with a mean, she's above the mean, and a standard deviation given here too. Now John took the ACT and he scored a 26 on the math portion. And the model for those scores, of course, are all of them going to be different, still normally distributed, bell-shaped, with a mean of 21, and a give or take a little more than 5. He also scored above the mean. We're asked first to look at Alicia's score and talk about what percentile it corresponds to, what proportion of the students scored her 670 points or less. So we want to find the area to the left of her 670 points under the normal model that's centered at 516. So we'll need to find her z-score first. We'll need to standardize her 670 by the mean and the standard deviation. And she did a little bit better than one standard deviation above the mean. Her z-score is about 1.33. So on the standardized scale, we thought about that scale. This is at 1.33, and we want the area to the left under this normal curve. So I need to go back to my formula card and take a look at the normal distribution card, part table A1. And remember, our table does give us areas to the left, and our z value is a 1.3, and then over to the 0.03 column. And let's pull off that value that's there. 9082. So her score corresponds to which percentile? The area to the left is 0 0.9082, but the percentile then would be around the 90th, the 90.82 percentile. The 90th or the 91st percentile would be fine here, but making sure we don't put on that line just the value of 0 0.0982 because that isn't what percentile that corresponds to. It's about the 90th, almost 91st percentile. Now, comparing the two, who had really the higher score? We already established that Aisha, so I don't want to necessarily circle that right away, but her score was what? Uh, 1.33 standard deviations above the mean. That's what her z-score turned out to be. Let's find the z-score for John. So we can take a look at how he did relative to the distribution of ACT scores. And he was above the mean too, 26 minus the 21. But the standard deviation here was a little more than 5. And so 5 over a little more than 5, that's less than 1. His z-score is about 0.94. So he didn't even score one standard deviation above the mean. He's at a lower percentile. So the person who did score higher relative to their distribution of scores is Alicia. And if we look at all the students who took that math SAT, those who scored in the top 2% received a letter. What score did you need to be able to get invited into this National Honor Society? We want to find the score that meets being that top 2 percentile. Or in other words, in our distribution now, we know that there's some really high score up here that would correspond to having about 2% in the upper tail, or 0.02. So we really want to find what we would call here the 98th percentile of our distribution when we know the mean is still 516. So this is kind of working backwards compared to part A. We want the 98th percentile. And the 98th percentile of a normal distribution that's standardized corresponds to what closest value for z? Let's take a look. So now we want in the middle of the table the areas to the left. We want to get as close to 0.98 as we possibly can. So I'm moving along here, finding 0.98. How close can we get to 0.98? 2.0, we're kind of in between these two here. 2.05 and 2.06, the closest one is going to be 2.05. So that's the closest value for Z. So the closest Z 
is 2.05, but of course that's not the score you need. That corresponds to saying score 2.05 standard deviations above the mean. In other words, what is the x that when you standardize it by the mean and the standard deviation, you end up getting a score that corresponds to a z-score of 2.05. So unstandardizing, taking 2.05 standard deviations above the mean would put you at a score of 753.8 points. All right, that's math ability. Let's take a look at our next question about being productive. We've got a graph here. It's showing us the productivity index over the past 12 months. So here's months, 1 through 12, and the productivity index, which is our response here that we're looking at and seeing how it's changed over the 12 months. Now, a person came up and looked at this and said, it looks like the distribution of productivity is skewed to the left. Is that a correct statement? We're not showing the distribution of productivity in the terms of a histogram. This is not a histogram before us. Our response variables on the y-axis, and we're looking at the values of the response over time and seeing a change, seeing an increase. What we have here is that this is a time plot. A sequence plot, sometimes that's called. It is not a histogram. And so the comment of shape of the distribution can't be assessed with a time plot. In fact, we wouldn't even make a histogram of this data because our time plot is showing an indication of an increasing trend. So it would not be appropriate to even combine that data and make a histogram next. The graph is a time plot. It is not a histogram. If it were a histogram, if our response variable was really down here on the x-axis and this was on the y-axis, your count or percentage of observations, then yes, that's showing the idea of a shape being skewed to the left. But it is not a histogram, it's a time plot, so no aspect of that shape should be discussed here, only that we see an increasing trend generally and a little leveling off at the end.